Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a really interesting and good video for you today. It's something I haven't ever done. I'm gonna take a message given by Colette Peters. Colette Peters is the director of the Bureau of Prisons uh, for the federal government. And she controls 122 prisons, about 157,000 inmates, give or take, uh, at any day. And she's coming out with all this stuff. Well. I didn't even see this yet. It just came out not long ago. It's this new transformational framework for a new whatever it's going to be called. Uh, boy, but I did a lot of research, and you guys know the way I am about the Bureau of Prisons. First of all, uh, they say a lot of shit that they don't do. 60 Minutes had a piece on it about, you know, she didn't know so many things. How don't you know how many guards you're short? The minute you get on, wouldn't you want to know how many people you need to control this agency? You don't know that number and you're into the job a year and a half, almost two years now? Give me a break. Oh, we'll have that number by October? Now, is that this, that, that can't be this year now. I, I am assuming it was last year, but we're going to find out what this Colette Peters has to say. And I'm going to analyze it from start to finish. So I think you guys will consider this pretty good. Uh, and... Listen, it's, this is near and dear to my heart. We all know that. So uh, let's check this out. Hello. In my last video message, I gave a bit of a primer regarding our strategic plan. Today, I'd like to spend more time with you, sharing the details of what we are calling our framework for the future. It is an ambitious plan and one that myself and your executive team believe that with your hard work, commitment, and dedication will help drive the agency now, remember, this is a message to her staff, all the people who work for her, and that's about 35,000 people, uh, you know, 36,000 people, something like that. Uh, now, mind you, this lady is the sixth director in the Bureau of Prisons. Obviously, none of them want to pull the chain and do the right thing by people, in my opinion. Uh, most of them just want to move on with their jobs. They probably sign very good contracts and even if they leave that job, they're going to get, uh, you know, X amount of dollars and it's going to be for a contract and they're going to make some money. This lady's been in corrections for 30 years, she said. There's not one thing so far that I've been watching and researching her. Uh, I have a plan and they need to hear my plan. If they don't hear my plan, they're, they're really being ignorant. Uh, they think they know. That's all I'm going to say. And they don't know shit. And that's what's sad. But let's continue this. Forward. We recognize that the Bureau's strength comes from you, our employees. You are the foundation of this agency. So you were top of mind as we created this framework, which consists of seven goals, which will support our mission and vision. So I want to talk about them for a minute. First and foremost, you. Our goal is to focus on you and recruit, train, retain, and ensure the well-being of our competent and diverse workforce who are ready to meet the current and future needs of the Bureau. Now, this video came out, what, a year and a half after she's been in office, or give or take like that, and uh, what's taking you so long? She's saying it's you, meaning the employees. Uh, she don't even care that the employee's been accused of more rapes than, than any other institution in the world. Okay, let's continue. And we know you are exhausted and riveted with overtime and augmentation. So we, along with the Department of Justice, will be laser focused on improving the situation this year. And we are using all tools at our disposal to address our staffing crisis. Recruitment events are up. Correctional officer applications are up. We've increased correctional officer salary by $2,000. We're trying to meet market salaries for health services. They increased the officer's salary by $2,000. What a joke. First of all, I, I, listen, I'm no correctional officer lover. You know that. Well, listen, I, I like people. And if they're a good person, they're a good person. The problem is they don't pay these people at all. That's number one. And don't tell me about $2,000 is up. I can I can just hear the laughter in the union halls and the cafeterias and the lunchrooms of all the prisons around the country. I can just hear it right now. Recruitment, relocation, and retention incentives are in place across this nation. 
We've raised the maximum entry age from 37 to 39 for our law enforcement hires. We also recognize that our buildings are in disrepair and that this has been a problem in the making for decades. We are currently undergoing a review from an outside contractor to assess our overall problem in order to appropriately ask for funding for our maintenance and repair backlog. In the meantime, we will leverage the resources we have to maintain, repair, and modernize infrastructure. Off the jump, I'm calling bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Uh, I don't see it. Wow, I don't know if I'm allowed to get, get as hard I am. Is that what you think your major problem is, updating your facilities? You think cameras is a major update? You're talking about infrastructure? Every budget and every little prison can put cameras. I can put cameras around my house. I, you can't buy 100 cameras at, I don't know, $100 a camera? It's $20 a camera. Come on, man. Making us really look stupid. or You're nothing but another government hack. An advanced technology. In the past 10 years, we have received an average of about $100 million a year for our estimated $3 billion backlog in maintenance and repairs. This year, we received a substantial increase in the amount, and it was in the amount of $180 million. So we will be working diligently on roofs, cameras, and perimeter fencing, and emergency repairs will continue. Overall items like emergency response buttons, collapsing stairwells, and damage due to storms. We will also focus on restrictive housing. I, I can't even tell you how many prisons they opened uh, and how many more they need. How about lowering the, the number of people you incarcerate? I think that wouldn't help. Close down some of these old facilities that aren't needed. Maybe you don't need enough, as many guards. Uh, you know, you don't have them as it is. What do you think about that? Maybe somebody's telling you. Maybe God's telling you. Maybe somebody's telling you. Hey, slow down on incarcerating people, huh? You know, you made this into a career instead of just a, a something that helps a society. We know that the use of restrictive housing can have detrimental effects on the physical and mental health of those in our care and custody. It is not an effective deterrent and can actually increase in an individual's future criminality. So we are going to work to optimize the... It could affect a person's future criminality? <laughs> How about it does? 70-something percent of people who leave SHU, special housing units, reoffend. That's not counting. I mean, a regular is about 43, 50%. Depend There's so many different numbers going around, but it's high. It's the worst in the free world. Use of restrictive housing so that we can safely and appropriately care for those in our custody while reducing the use of restrictive housing. So we have our own internal work group recommendations that are forthcoming, as well as an assessment from an external body through the National Institute of Justice. And we look forward to sharing those recommendations with you in good time. Some of the short-term recommendations include instilling healthy interactions into all relevant trainings, discontinuing the use of punishing those who engage in self-harm, exploring a maximum limit on restrictive housing stays, creating more normalized environments generally, and exploring specialty posts such as reentry or mental health officers. We're also going to increase transparency in restrictive housing through data sharing internally and externally. Wow, bull, calling BS, calling BS. You're gonna create transparency into a unit that is shut down, locked out from even your own people. They can't get in there and in, in, inspect it and can't get in there at nights and can't get there in there a certain time. Or when they get in there, it's by the time they get in there, they can't just pop in on, uh, you know, unannounced and stuff like that. You know, there's ways to fix this lady, but you're not giving it the, the right uh, answer so, so far. You're talking about a whole bunch of bull, man. Uh, so far, I'm hearing Zippo of what you're really doing, man. I'm glad, you know, I'm glad I'm on the outside, and I know people who are on the inside don't see this, or maybe they do now with all the phones and stuff like that. But uh, I can't believe anybody in the Bureau of Prisons is believing this crap so far. We also know that to improve your working conditions and better prepare individuals for reentry. We need to develop more normalized environments inside our institutions that better mirror our community. 
At our last executive team, we had a presentation where we reviewed other correctional systems who have done this safely and effectively and discussed implementing these ideas in select facilities. Yeah, lady, why don't you just go to Norway, Sweden, uh, you know, Germany, go to a lot of different countries and see how they run their penal systems and you'll be surprised. That's number one. Focusing on health services is in our fifth category. We know that our health services employees are understaffed. So in addition to advancing our recruitment. Health service personnel are understaffed. They're already contracted out to public health services. Jesus. Well, be and retention in health services. We are currently undergoing a massive review of our healthcare system to ensure that we are providing high quality, cost-effective, and innovative healthcare systems. We need to improve our reliance on data and research to drive our decision-making, which will improve operations, policies, procedures across all disciplines. She is saying this after knowing that what I just read and just did a video on is they don't report or do any training on suicide where it's in the manuals, in their policies to do it. Let me just give you a little hint about like the shoe, what they're supposed to do. It's supposed to pull you out after being in there for 30 days and evaluate you. Hear what I said? Pull you out. Take you out of the cell, different environment, and evaluate you mentally to see how the shoe is happening. See what's going on in the shoe. Special housing. The whole. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. I just heard from some people on the inside. They aren't doing that at all. At all. They aren't pulling people out and evaluating them after being in a hole for 30 days. Uh, it, it's a joke. Just like the DHO process is a joke. You know, obviously, you know, inmates don't get the the rights to, to argue as much as some people do. Of course, I get that. Uh, but, man, the reason things happen in prison is because you keep putting your head in the sand about just people complaining about the same thing over and over and you're doing nothing. You're just, you're just warehousing people and lady, you're not, I am not, I am not impressed after being in a job this long and not knowing how many in, uh, 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 correctional officers you need. Uh, uh, that, that boggles my mind. That really does. And finally, we will continue to improve and leverage our relationships with public and private stakeholders, as well as justice involved individuals to help better inform our policies and practices. This strategic framework supports the overall Department of Justice strategic plan and serves as our blueprint for pursuing and achieving our goals. But building the framework is not nearly enough. We need action. She said working with uh, uh, stakeholders or people from the outside or contractors. I guess they're talking about guys like myself, hopefully. I've been vo a voice for reform in the Bureau of Prisons since I, le I left, and not once, not once, with all of the uh, uh, positive things I've done for law enforcement, for inmates, for people going back to prison, to re-entry programs, not once did anybody ever reach out to me and say, Larry, we need your advice on how to correct and correctly uh, help this prison. Uh, or help the system itself, whether it's a state system or a federal bureau of prisons. Uh, this really pisses me off because now I just see where it's all a bunch of talk. You almost get to that point where you don't know if you want to help them because you don't. You think they're just going to use you, and I, I'm I'm too old for that. This lady who is supposedly a wants compassion for inmates. I'm sure she's seen some horrific things that she had to turn her head to. If she's if she's legit. She's legit. Now, again, mind you, I'm trying to give this lady the benefit of the doubt, but after a year and a half and, I, and I'm seeing the problems still going on, worse and worse and worse, not reporting. Nobody. Who is firing these wardens? That's what I want to know right now. You can talk about anything, you're, anything you want to talk about. Talk about firing wardens. That's who you talk about. Talk about the bonuses. Oh, did you stop the bonuses? I'd love to not. No, I'm going to find out. Did you stop the bonuses to wardens? <laughs> Let's see. So the executive team, regional offices, and divisions and headquarters have begun to advance these seven goals. But we cannot do it alone. We need your help. We need your ideas. And of course, we want your enthusiasm. We are at an exciting moment in our history. 
we have the opportunity to make a lasting impact on the lives of the people we serve, the communities we protect, and the nation we love. Again, you are our everything. Thank you for all that you do. Together, I look forward to seeing this plan drive us forward. Wow, while you saw it, people, uh... I am I am dumbfounded. I am uh, I thought I was expecting. That's the first time I watched the, the, the speech, and I was hoping to hear more. Uh, I'm glad I seen it when I did, so I can get as mad as you are. Uh, if you have a loved one in prison in the Federal Bureau of Prisons, you know what they're going through. Whether it's costs, whether it's uh, the way they just treat you, the way they don't prepare you for the outside, the way they don't. Uh, you know, I get punishment. I really do but I don't get punishment without rehabilitation. Otherwise, just let's keep the game going because that's all it is. And that's, you know, it's a shame law enforcement has become that. If Don't call yourselves law enforcement officers if, if you're doing that. Uh, this lady says, I've been in law enforcement and corrections. I don't know what she did before she was a corrections uh, officer. This lady was actually ran the Oregon I think it was Oregon uh, State Department of Corrections and, and implemented reforms. I, I don't know what she implemented there, but if she's going this slow in the Bureau of Prisons, the Federal Bureau of Prisons, she's going way too slow. I don't know what's going to happen. If I don't see some warden's heads roll publicly, uh, they get such big money, get such power, uh, but no, no accountability, if you ask me. None. None. I haven't heard of one or a warden firing, you know, kick them out, out, indict them for um, malice, indict them for uh, uh, deliberate indifference. They know what's going on and they're letting it go on. That's the problem right now, people. And just remember what I said. Hear me out on this one and please keep following because I'm not going to quit on prison stuff. I'm doing GTA. I'm going to do a lot of other stuff. I'm going to do fun stuff. This stuff hits me in the heart. You all know that. Anyway, guys, please don't make bad choices. Don't go to prison. Look what you got to deal with. You got to deal with this kind of crap. And listen, it's not about that. You, if you got a problem and any kind of issues, seek help, please. Seek help. Crime isn't the answer. I can tell you that. Incarceration isn't the help you're going to get and you need. It's not. It is what it is. It is a ruthless system that puts you, their foot on a person's neck and doesn't let it up. Just the society we live in, I'm sad to say it. I showed them a system I had that I can weed out bad cops and weed out bad wardens. You think they want to listen to it? Nah, they don't want to listen to it. Otherwise, they're indicting their own or they're saying, wow, this, this former inmate knows more than we do. Well, sadly, I think I do. I'd love to run the Bureau of Prison. I'll show you what I do. Anyway, guys, hang in there. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. You know I'm going to answer. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe.